Now, today's discussion focuses on financial reporting and corporate reporting, referring to the chief examiner's report to find out what we can do. This is the chief examiner's report for the December 2022 ICA examination. If you are doing corporate reporting, stay tuned because the, the problem actually <laughs> cut across. The issues that the examiner raised concern on in financial reporting are almost the same issues that are also in corporate reporting. So you want to stay tuned and make sure you listen carefully in that particular case. So we want to go into the performance of candidates because that is where I am excited about and that is where we can really start our discussion on. And I want you to pay attention carefully because we are just discussing and going through what the chief examiner has suggested and what we can do to ultimately pass the examination. It says that on the average, the performance of candidates was below expectation. The pass rate was about 20%. This is December 2022. 20% means that for every 10 students who sat for the examination, eight people failed the exam and only two people passed the examination. Only two. If you take 100 people, the same idea, 80 failed. Imagine that only 20 passed the exams. The chief examiner said the poor performance may be as a result of short period for preparation and lack of appreciation of contents and application of the relevant IFRSs. So three things generally that the chief examiner has raised can. Preparation is number one. Number two is lack of appreciation of the content, meaning that students really don't understand the scope of the syllabus. And then the third thing that the examiner raised concern on is application of the IFRSs. Preparation, appreciation of the content, IFRSs. So on the preparation side, that is very crucial. This semester, for instance, we have 12 weeks to go. We have 12 weeks, 12 weeks. We are currently in the sixth week. So we've done six weeks, half. And we have six more weeks to go. The question is, if you are sitting for financial reporting, and like I said, by extension, it's the same reasons for corporate reporting as well. So if you're sitting for financial reporting and you're sitting for corporate reporting, we are in the sixth week. The question is, how prepared are you? How far have you been studying? Are you working hard? Are you making sure that you are involving yourself and working hard to be able to pass the examination? No, because 99.9% .9 of you are sitting down doing nothing because you are waiting one week to the exams, you go and take some miserable leave from your workplace. Just a week to the exam. You go and take miserable leave from your workplace, place, cost your company productivity hours. They pay you your salary, or some of you will take two weeks. Then throughout that two weeks, you try to crunch everything in the two weeks, but there's, you don't even have an understanding of the content of the syllabus. But that's the first thing, preparation. Beyond these three broad general things the examiner went ahead to give us some advice that we need to follow in that particular case to increase our chances of passing the examination the first one is this so candidates are hereby advised to note the following for future guidance one the content and application of the IFRSs constitute about 70% of the syllabus listen carefully this is the chief examiner speaking that the content and application of the IFRSs constitute about 70% of the syllabus. No joke, 70%. So candidates can only pass the financial reporting paper if they place premium on learning IFRSs. That's the first thing, 70%. And, and this is true across all, across all level because you're going to be having a dedicated, you know, IFRS, Quest, that's in question two. That's 20 marks coming up. You're going to have question three. That is a single entity financial statement. And each single entity financial statement, the footnote there is actually an accounting standard. And so that is also another 20 marks. Then you have question one, consolidated financial statement. All the footnotes in consolidated financial statement is actually application of accounting standards. Because in the consolidated financial statement, we're going to have the IFRS 10, Consolidated Financial Statement, I, IFRS 3, Business Combination. You're going to have IAS 28, Investment in Associates, all right, and other issues coming in. So 
20 marks IFRS dedicated, single entity all the footnote is IFRS. Remember even in consolidation, there are other IFRSs that you have to apply, especially when you're doing dealing with fair value adjustment, intra-group trading and all of those things. There are counting standards that you need to apply. Then. If the examiner is excited, even sometimes in the question four, which is going to be ratios, you may have to do some adjustments before you calculate the necessary ratios and then do the analysis. It means that if you're not strong in the accounting standards, you don't have great knowledge in the accounting standards, you are going to fail the examination. No joke. So if 10 people sit for the exam and eight fail and only two pass, why? It is because the two people who passed prepared adequately for the exams. The two people who passed understood the contents of the syllabus. The two people who passed understood, most importantly, the accounting standards because that represents 70% of the syllabus. The second recommendation by the chief examiner is preparing for the financial reporting examination requires working as many questions as possible read the theories and solve practical questions L listen to the language of the chief examiner as many as possible that is the examiner's recommendation now preparing for the exams and answering as many questions as possible meaning that you have to study for long hours meaning you have to dedicate some time to study on your own that is why if you just sit down and one week to the exams, two weeks to the exam, take some miserable leave from your workplace and think you are going to learn and pass the exams, you are just sabotaging your own future. And these are some of the reasons why people sheepishly say that the ICA is difficult. No matter what you do in the ICA, you are going to fail. It's not that the ICA is difficult. It's because you are lazy. Number three, in the examination room, try to allocate your time evenly time allocation is the third issue that the chief examiner talks about in the exam hall and the examiner gave a clue the clue here is that based on the max allocation note that each mark requires a so maximum time to be allocated to 20 max question is 36 minutes you will only do that if you understand the accounting standards you will only do that if you have been able to solve as many questions as possible because some of you get to the exam hall and you freak out you see questions and you start uh you know shaking why because you've not prepared you are ill prepared for the exams and if you are ill prepared you start having a lot of pressure coming on you and everything evaporates from your brain generally four you must also provide answers in direct response to the requirements of the respective questions try to avoid deviation this is something that we have shared on the channel as well over and over again the verbs that the examiner uses and how you are expected to write out your answer so if the examiner says explain the ethical issues in the case or in the scenario that the accountant is faced how do you write it out it's very important if the question says explain how the above will be treated in the financial statement of the company you must know how to write that out and the various verbs that the chief the examiner is going to be using we have discussed it on the channel in case you've not watched that video you can check our how-to channel uh, our how-to playlist and you'll be able to find that video there because some people deviate next one it is always advisable to answer the questions that you are comfortable with first this has been something that i tell students every time it is always advisable to answer the questions that you are comfortable with first this will enhance your confidence level and sustain your focus and tenacity throughout the three hours a and that is why you need to really allocate your time well because in the exam hall you're going to have 15 minutes reading time then you have your three hours to work with so you have to position yourself in such a way that you start with what you can do best first so you build yourself up the reason is that if you start with a question and you're not able to solve the question like you start freaking out your heart start beating faster than it is supposed to beat when that happens all the blood is just going to the heart and your brain and nothing is working up there at the end of the day so you need 
to answer what you can do best first. That is why I suggest to students always that if you go to the example, there is going to be some written question five, always in the financial reporting, there's going to be some written. Let me take you through this paper. I think so. Yeah. This is it, question five. This is December 2022. And you can see the question five here. There are some theories here. There are some theory issues here that you can answer in that particular case. So you start with what you can do best first. Now, how do you start with what you can do best first? By ensuring that you understand the scope of the syllabus. So you go to question five and answer all the theory questions. The ones you know, answer them as fast as possible. The goal is you make sure that you are answering questions on a fresh page. You make sure that you are answering questions on the fresh page. That is new questions on fresh page, generally at the end of the day. But you attempt the theories. Every financial reporting exams, we're going to be having theories in the question five. So if you look at this B aspect, there is a five mark question there. What does it say? It says, define liability and describe the circumstance under which provisions should be recognized. That is in accordance with IAS 37, provisions, contingent liabilities, and contingent assets. So what is liability? What are the circumstances? It means the recognition criteria, and that is what, okay? The amount should be reliably measured. There should be present obligation, settlement of which will result into transfer of future economic benefit embodying the entity. And liability is a present obligation as a result of past events. Explain this, get five marks. You don't need a miracle for that. Then there is another five marks here under IFRS 11 joint, joint arrangement. It is an investor that, 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 that it says explain the distinction between joint ventures and joint operations. So that's a theory question that you can take generally in that particular case. And that's question five. And even so, still in question five, there is a standard question here, IAS 33, and in spare share. Then there is an A aspect of the question, which is comment on the accountant's treatment of the aforementioned transaction in Damba financial statement. So the accountant has done some treatment and we are supposed to comment on it in that particular case. So that is what you do. So you go to the question five, look at the theories that you can answer best first. And that helps you to really put yourself up generally at the end of the day. So once you answer all your theories, what do you do? You then position yourself to go to maybe question four, ratios. Calculate the ratios, analyze the ratios. Then you can go to question two, the IFRSs, go to question three, which is the uh, single entity financial statement. Then consolidation, your last or last but one question in that particular case. How do you position yourself so you don't become a victim in July 2023 examination? It's simple. Understand the accounting standards. Solve as many questions as possible. Allocate time properly in the exam hall. Answer questions directly and make sure you start with what you can do best first at the end of the day. On the overall, what the chief examiner is saying is that you need to prepare adequately for the exams, generally in that particular case. Number two, you have to understand the, and appreciate the contents of the syllabus. And certainly, number three, you need to ensure that you are able to apply the accounting standards very well. This is financial reporting. Hi, my name is Inshira Premium. Now you can get access to all our content, new podcast episode, and everything that you want to know about Insura Premium right in our Insura Premium mobile application. What does that mean? It means that downloading the mobile application gives you access to all the contents that you want in relation to employment, ICAG, ACCA, personal development, and all other new episodes that we are going to be releasing in the future that will be available in the mobile application. Now, the sweet spot here is this, that you will be the person to get an exclusive access to episodes even before they go live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on all other platforms. So what are you waiting for? Head on to the Google Play Store or the, or the App Store and search for the Insurer Premium mobile application and download it, be part of the family, and get access to these contents that will help you to be able to become successful. I'm really excited about what our team is doing here and what we are going to be doing going into the future, looking at the various contents that we are going to be making accessible and available exclusively in the mobile application. So head on to the Google Play Store or the App Store 
can type insurer premium and download the insurer premium app mobile application and become part of the family let me assist you provide you with the assistance that you need with my team here so you can become successful and most importantly take your life to the next level thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the mobile application with some exclusive episodes to assist you to become supporting quickly and i just want you to see that it's almost the same thing cut across that the chief examiner has raised concern on so this is december 2022 again on corporate reporting here the examiner did not talk about a pass mark but then he talked about he, he made a reference to previous sessions or previous examination diets and so we'll be able to go back behind the scene and see exactly what some of the issues are that the chief examiner raised concern on so performance of candidates the general performance of candidates in this exams diet was poor compared to previous diets there was a marginal decrease in the pass rate so the question that we need to ask ourselves is what has been the performance in the past so we need to go back to previous diets and find out exactly what the problem was then the examiner further explained that there was a marginal decrease in the pass rate it means the pass rate decreased a little bit the candidate who performed well demonstrated a clear understanding of the subject matter some candidates also showed abysmal performance <laughs> very very smelling the poor level of preparedness of some candidates reflected in their poor performance did you hear that which is the same issue that we spoke about in the financial reporting breakdown because preparation is the problem so let's look at previous diets what's the what the performance was so i'm going to refer you to another uh, uh, chief examiner's report and this is november 2020 because in the november 2020 the examiner provided us with some knowledge on what exactly transpired because remember in december 2022 the examiner said performance was poor as compared to previous diets so in previous diets this is november 2020 how was the performance the performance of candidates was very poor with a pass rate of about 25 percent so 25 percent simply means that okay in corporate reporting also when you put 10 people in a room can you imagine that two and a half of them will pass put 10 people in a room to write financial corporate reporting paper two and a half of them will pass okay so approximately you we cannot have two and a half human beings isn't it so let's say three people will pass <laughs> okay three will pass and the seven will be in the mat then he says candidate poor performance was consistent and was evenly spread across most centers then let's look at some of the notable issues that the chief examiner spoke about candidate's weakest point was application of of IFRS and preparation of the consolidated financial statements so it goes back to what we said in the financial reporting is the same issue here fundamental weaknesses observed is lack of appropriate knowledge bad strategy use of time people don't use their time well wrong order in which questions were attempted and inability to apply concept to practical scenarios candidates lacked effective time management skills that is the time allocation issue that we spoke about a moment ago in financial report some candidates number their questions wrongly that's one of the dumbest things some people do some candidates had very poor handwriting i always tell my students this some candidates answered the same question on several conservative pages without cross-referencing okay and that is bad this made tallying their marks very difficult most candidates displayed inadequate knowledge of the issues of the syllabus it all boils down to the three things that we spoke about earlier preparation lack of appreciation of content application of the accounting standards and suddenly what goes on in the exam hall that is the time allocation so if you are preparing and to sit for financial reporting or corporate reporting in the july 2023 examination this is your faith this is how it's been 